Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is how you can install Mac OS X Lion 10.7.3 on a Windows PC. Um, so natively without having to run it in a virtual machine. Um, however, one thing I will make clear is that on this video I will be doing it in a virtual machine because it's a lot easier to record. So because I can just record my screen rather than having to set a camera up. And so don't get worried that it's only going to work in virtual machines. It will work on your system as long as you you know configure it properly and stuff. So that's pretty much all I need to say right now so let's get started okay so at this point you want to have your laptop switched off and have already burned um, IATCOS L2 to a disk um, it comes in a DMG format when you download it and you can grab it from the link in the description but you can always convert it to an ISO and if you want to do that there is a link in the description to a tutorial that will show you how to do that so then you, you can then burn it to a disk and then just switch off your laptop and then from that point on is where I'm going to go from so so if we take my virtual machine switched off to mean that your laptop's turned off what you want to do is you want to put your disk into um, your laptop and power on the machine and you want to boot, well, well turn on your machine uh, your laptop and then um, boot up from your disk so just go into the boot menu and select to boot from your disk And you should get, you know, the Apple screen like this and just wait for it to boot up. So again, I'm doing mine in a virtual machine because it's easier to record because you see that I can like, you know, shut it down and everything. I don't have to have a, an actual camera sat pointed at my screen. So it's just more comfortable for me. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is because when I did my uh, triple boot system, it was really awkward to film because I had to keep, you know, moving the camera out of the way and stuff like that because it's really difficult to get a good angle. So, and don't worry if it sometimes takes a little while to boot into um, the actual disc. It can take a while on some laptops and stuff. So, just give it a good 15 minutes maximum. It shouldn't take that long, but um, on slower laptops, it's possible that it could take up to like 15 minutes. So, okay. So once it's booted up, you should see a screen like this. Um, it's this is basically the IACOS and the Mac Lion installation, you know, welcome screen. Um, so just select your language, and you can see it has the um, IACOS in the background. Well, the IACOS L there, and um, let me just move a bit. You can see to set up the installation of Mac OS X, click continue, and just press continue. And read the README. Um, you can see it's the L2 installation. And right at this point, most of you, if not all of you, won't be able to see any hard drives. Now the reason for this is that you want to go up to utilities and go to disk utility. And you need to repartition your hard drive to have Mac OS X extended partitioning. So you just click on your hard drive and click on the erase tab, on, unless you want to partition it, in which case um, you need to take whichever action you want there um, because you know partitioning you know what you're doing if you're doing that so you then want to format into extended so Mac OS extended journaled and call your drive whatever you want and if you're planning a dual boot system you will actually want to go to partition so I'll just demonstrate the partition thing if you're actually wanting to do a dual boot system you'll have to split into two partitions so one partition for Mac and the other partition you want to put into um, MS-DOS for Windows and then you want to change the options to the master boot record partition table but that is only if you're planning to dual boot with Windows um, for everybody else you can just go with you know the one partition for Mac OS extended on the, G, um, on the GPT partition table so there we go Macintosh so just apply that and on the left it should mount underneath your hard drive um, there it is and then just close disk utility 
and you can then see that you have a disk to install iOCOS to. So now in the bottom left, you want to make sure you click customize. Don't just go ahead and click install, make sure you customize. And so in here, you see that the main installation is selected by default and you want to look down each option, down each like sub menu, down each menu, sorry, um, for all of the little configuration settings you can have. Um, I'm just going to go through them fairly quickly, but give you a brief idea on what they are. The bootloaders are required to in, like to boot into your system once it's been installed, so you have to have a bootloader, as it says there. Um, that's another note. If you click on you know each thing, it will actually tell you what it does. So the default bootloader is Chameleon. Um, I prefer this bootloader. Um, however, there is also the Chimera bootloader, which is a modified version of Chameleon, and that basically just gives a couple of extra features. But if you're not like if you just want to boot up, Chameleon is just fine. So just choose which one you want. And in the options, you have the typical graphics enabler to make it graphics work and stuff like that. You know, you've got built-in Ethernet detection. And then you've got other options which you probably don't want to do unless you know what they are. 32-bit um, boot is actually quite useful for some drivers and stuff, which possibly might be required. Um, so 32-bit boot could be important for you, depending on what drivers you need to install. And then if we go into patches, you have fake SMC, um, which is obviously it says it must be selected. Disabler, which says that it disables Apple CPU power management driver, which it also disables a couple of other things. And if I were you, I'd leave that on there. RTC, you can select your RTC. Um, this is just pretty much just leave the default really here. Um, unless, of course, you get errors with stuff like that and then just go to 32 bit. Evo reboot allows, as you can see, um, fixes reboot and shutdown issues. Um, I don't actually need this personally, so some of you might not need this. Um, just thinking back to one of my previous videos, you may not need this. Um, look, I'm just trying to think. Right, okay, so with the IOPCI, well, with the IOPCI family, you might not actually need to install that, so just leave that blank unless you have a boot up issue where you can see something to do with PCI configuration begin, in which case you'll probably have to reinstall and actually tick that box that time. Um, but it's better to go without it first rather than to go with it and then have to come back, if you see what I mean. It's better to do without first and then reinstall with it afterwards than do it the other way around because you may miss some like updates and stuff like that, it, it, if you see what I mean. So now we're on to custom kernels. Um, we have the Atom kernel, or there is also obviously the Mac kernel, which is built into the installer. Um, so if you don't tick a custom kernel, the Mac kernel will be there. Um, because of this, AMD isn't actually supported at the point at this point in time. You can't actually do AMD right now. But if my information is correct, and it usually is, there should be a legacy kernel out pretty soon, which will allows which will allow AMD users to actually install and with the release of the legacy kernel, I'm assuming there will be an IACOS update, um, so you'll be able to install that. Otherwise, what you'll have to do is actually install it, and you won't be able to boot into it, but what you'll have to do is then use, um, it's quite difficult to explain, but you'd have to put the legacy kernel onto a USB, um, connect your USB to your laptop, and then just basically go back into the installer and use the terminal to copy the legacy kernel across and it's difficult to explain now but it is possible so if we ever get into that situation I will bring out a tutorial then but it is possible so don't worry about that and then on the bottom we have drivers so the drivers are essentially what you need for your hardware to work you know as fully functioning as you can get um, you see in the main hardware you have you know stuff like sound USBs and stuff like that um, this is basically you know I can't really tell you what to take here it's specific to your you know your hardware um, so basically just go through and pick what you want there um, personally just a note on sound I found Voodoo to be the better version for sound um, Apple HDA I'm not too sure about because it's pretty much only real tech cards um, so if you don't have a real tech card it's better to go with Voodoo and that's about all I'm going to say on the main hardware um, if we go into VGA which is graphics you have ATI and NVIDIA cards support um, you can also I think I think it's Nvidia 
I'm not sure, but you can actually get official drivers from their website, which you can install on Mac. So they they have official Mac drivers. So don't get worried if you can't see your Nvidia card there. Um, obviously, have a look around on the internet first and see if you can find stuff. And that's another point to make is that if the drivers that you need aren't on here, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. There's only a few on here. You can find stuff on the internet and you know install them afterwards um, with just Kext helper or stuff stuff like that. There's just there's hundreds of different options that you can try. So if they're not on here, don't panic. There's just search Google for whatever it is that you need, and you'll most likely find it. And so onto networks, and you've just got your wired and your wireless, and you can see there's a bunch of different things which you can install. Um, wireless there isn't that much, but you can usually find the wireless drivers anywhere really. You can just search them on Google, you'll be able to find them. And so once you've selected everything you need, just click OK. I don't have to bother ticking anything because I'm on a virtual machine, um, but you will have to tick some stuff, so don't just press install. And once you've selected, you just want to click install. And I at cost will then start installing. It'll take around 15 minutes, give or take. Um, on some machines, it probably could take up to a good 45 minutes, depending on the speed. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to leave it and come back to it once it's finished so that you don't have to sit through like 15 minutes of rubbish. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so after the installation, all you have to do is put in your username and password and stuff like that, set up your account. And after you've done that, you'll be greeted with this screen. Um, so it is the iCloud screen. And all you have to do is, you know, put in your user ID if you want, if you want to use iCloud. Um, obviously, you won't have this file up in the corner. This is just the 10.7.3 update. And all you want to do is, after you've, you know, sorted iCloud and stuff and sorted everything out, um, you just want to open up. Let me just close this. Open the update. And you have to do it this way. Don't do it via software update because there can be problems with that and you can't put stuff back afterwards. So, for example, if you're using a custom kernel or various different drivers, what you have to do is install the combo update and then after you've installed the combo update, you want to put your drivers back before you restart. So if you see here, um, if I just open this up, you can see that we have the 10.7.3 update so blah, 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 blah. you'd install this and then after it has installed and it gets to the point where this button down here changes from continue to restart um, you'll want to reinstall all your drivers and stuff um, and then you can just go ahead and restart after that whereas if you do it through software update you can have problems when you're booting back up so as I said just go ahead and install it and it takes a little while And there you go. So just set it to install. It takes about half an hour. And then at the end, just reinstall anything you'll have to reinstall. So um, stuff like sound drivers and stuff like that. Um, but not everything. It depends because it's better to reinstall everything, but not everything will need to be reinstalled. So um, it's up to you. And you can re reinstall them either by just going ahead with Kext Helper or Multibeast. And if you don't know what they are, you can just look them up online. There's plenty of tutorials for them. And apart from that, that is how you get Mac OS X Lion 10.7.3 running on a Windows PC um, using iOutcos L2. As I said, links are in the description. Um, so go ahead and get them. If you want to see more stuff in future, just subscribe to my channel. Um, there's obviously going to be more stuff like this in future. Um, my next video is probably going to be 10.7.3 using iBoot. Um, so that's if you want a retail Mac installation on your machine rather than a mod heavily modified one such as iOutcos. And there's also a bunch more stuff related to that coming out soon. So if you want to see what it is, just subscribe. If you have any problems, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Or various other people will get back to you as everyone seems to help each other out in the comments on my videos. And other than that, just like my video. Um, again, remember to subscribe. And apart from that, there's not much else to say. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers. Bye.